What's up YouTube? I'm Joe. You're watching my channel Ink and Iron back with a multi-tool comparison video. This is the Leatherman Wave Plus and this is the Ozark Trail Multi-Force. These are both pliers based multi-tools. They are highly competitive but in drastically different price brackets that we'll talk about later. So we're going to do a side by side. We're going to go through each tool and compare. I'm going to give you my two cents. I've carried both of them for weeks on end. Um, I've used most of the tools that are contained within. I haven't used the can opener or the wire stripper on this. Never really used the wire stripper on this either, so I'll let you know that kind of thing as we go. But uh, if you're doing some holiday shopping, wondering what to get people, you know, these are, are pretty useful videos. So, um, first off, Leatherman Wave Plus. This is a thumb tab. So these are aftermarket. I installed these myself. It normally comes just with an open hole like this one. Same thing goes for the uh, serrated blade on the other side. So I'll be bringing out this um, last generation Leatherman Wave as a comparison for uh, anything I've modified on this tool, which is a couple of things. And have the Ozark Trail Multiforce here. You can see very, very similar looking tool. The uh, Multiforce here came out shortly after the patents on the Leatherman Wave expired. So it kind of took the Wave pattern and ran with it and did make some modifications. The first one you'll see as we open it up here. So the Leatherman, right, we have the thick sides facing this way. Leatherman opens like this. Okay, so the fat ends, if you will, fat ends, are kind of like under the pivot. This tool opens the opposite direction. Yeah, it gets a little bit confusing when you switch back and forth between the two, uh, but you know, if you're watching this, you're probably not a multi-tool reviewer, so that's uh, not going to be much of an issue for you. Both of them fold open. It's a slip joint mechanism that keeps them in place. You can see a comparison of our plier heads here. So the current iteration of the Wave is the Wave Plus. It comes with these replaceable cutting jaws on there. There's a hard, whoops, sorry. Hard wire notch here at the bottom. This is more for um, you know flat uh, electrical cord, I guess. I don't really use it. Um, you know, I cut zip ties and stuff with it. Here is a bolt turning jaws, and then sort of a semi um, slim nose plier here. Not not a true needle nose plier. People call these needle nose, but uh, it would have to basically be this tip portion, like all the way down. That's a needle nose. On the Ozark Trail, it's a little bit of a larger design. Let me see if I can get them tip to tip here. So you can see overall, the Ozark Trail is a little bit thicker. I don't know if that means much for long-term durability. I've experienced them performing about the same as the Leatherman's. Again, same type of um, wire cutting jaws here, hard wire down here, soft wire up here, bolt turning, and you know some fine teeth on a slim nose up front. Just a quick side-by-side -side of the pattern there so you can get a good idea. They perform pretty much the same. They're very similar shape and um, neither one of these lock up when you um, clamp down. Whoops, well, this one does a little bit. Interesting. So Leatherman has this problem with the replaceable cutters where if you really squeeze them, it no longer falls open. <laughs> Man, I thought I solved that on this one. I did the uh, you just jog the handles like this and it will loosen up a little bit. Anyway, that's a known issue with Leatherman, so take that into account. I haven't experienced that with this particular multi-force though, so there you go. We're going to move to the external tools, that is the tools available when the multi-tool is in the closed position, the pliers are closed. Here we go. Let's go, uh, all right, serrated knife came out first. It is a liner lock mechanism on the multi-force. Oops, plain blade, serrated blade. You can hear the positive lockup on the Leatherman. And I have to say overall, the uh, locking is definitely more trustworthy on the Leatherman. On the multi-force, I find myself having to, when I get to here, really, really make sure, emphasize, push again to make sure that I got the liner lock engaged. It feels a little bit reluctant that's just a little bit of a build quality issue there. The pattern on these serrated knives is remarkably similar. Pretty much the same in terms of cutting length. Yeah, about identical. 
I think the tip here on this Leatherman, yeah, this one's a little, a little chewed up. Um, this is a pre-owned Leatherman, so I did not do that. Uh, both of these serrated knives are pretty sharp. I think the absolute sharpness goes to the Leatherman. Their serrated blades just come super screaming sharp. This one is pretty well loved. It uh, definitely needs a touch up. Um, the Ozark Trail works pretty well, um, but not, not quite as sharp as the Leatherman. It feels like there's a little bit of a burr on here maybe. Haven't, haven't touched up either one of them though. All right, let's move on to plain edge blade. So we can see again, very, very similar designs. Like I said, the Ozark Trail takes most of its design language from the Leatherman Wave because the patents are expired. So if you're gonna get at me in the comments and be like, can't believe someone's remaking the Wave. Dude, it's perfectly legal, just chill. There is a slight difference in the uh, saber grind height. You can see the height of the grind goes up a little bit further on the Leatherman. It makes it a little bit slicier. Uh, in terms of edge holding, I think it does go to the Leatherman in my experience, although both can take a keen edge. Um, this blade will just last a little bit longer. In terms of lockup, same kind of thing on the multi-force. I feel like I need to, you know, hear the lock engage. Sometimes have to like, you know, give it a little bit extra, but I think now that it's breaking in, it's becoming more reliable. Yeah, sounds a lot like it's Leatherman counterpart over here. The saw blade. Both of these have a dedicated small saw blade. Both are made properly and very, very similar. Similarly, excuse me, the teeth on the Ozark Trail are a little bit deeper, it looks like. They're also more justified perpendicular to the spine of the saw, whereas the Leatherman, they kind of cant back a little bit. Uh, they perform largely the same. I, I don't use a saw much in my day-to-day, -day, so I, I can't say, you know, over the long term if one's really that much better than the other. You know, if you need to cut a dowel or a small tree limb or, you know, cut a 2 by 4 in a pinch, you can do that with either one of these. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> How do I keep opening the same tool on this thing? Uh, did you see that? So that looks like it's locked up, but it's not. Yeah, there you go. You gotta push the Ozark Trail just a little bit further sometimes. Just something to note if you're comparison shopping. Yeah, the pivot's a little tight. Might just need some oil, but figured we're doing a review. Might as well mention it. So both of these have a diamond coated file. And I've heard repeatedly that the uh, multi-force over here down at the bottom is a significantly worse diamond file in terms of like you know filing down metal um, I haven't found that so far I have worked with metal a little bit of copper brass some steel it seems to be holding up fine both feel relatively smooth it's a pretty high grit you could sharpen tools with either one of these both have an edge file you can see a little bit there so they can cut through metal, you know, not too much, some staples, some nails, something like that. You, you got to do it in a pinch. You can do it with either one of these. And then both have a uh, double cut file pattern on the back side, and both work pretty well. I'd say in terms of aggressiveness, the Leatherman does feel more aggressive, but in practice, I haven't found that much difference. I do like both of these as uh, nail files, actually. It's uh, sort of an infinite nail file. Works pretty well, and I really enjoy having the uh, diamond file. I was really glad to see it on the uh, Ozark Trail. It's one of the reasons I am bothered to pick it up. I already you know, had a wave and a surge. Okay, in terms of locking mechanism, right, for the tools we're about to look on the inside, very similar uh, deals going on here. They, uh, you push on the bottom and it sort of rocks out happens on both of them. The Leatherman, you can see visually where it's interacting with the back of these tools, but largely the same in practice, push on the tab. I do like that the uh, Ozark Trail is a little bit larger, a little bit bigger landing spot for your finger. So the rest of the tools are on the inside, 
and uh, I am going to have to sub in the uh, other wave in a second, and you'll see why. Okay, let's uh, compare here. So, everyone's favorite tool to have an opinion about is the scissors, and these are very comparable in that they are quite small, they fold away very compactly. Um, you know, for me personally, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of either one of these scissor designs. I think the Wave does work a bit better. I've been really struggling with the Ozark Trail Multiforce this week, trying to get the blades to actually interact and come together. They seem to want to splay apart and, and kind of, you know, not cut. <laughs> so that hasn't been great. Both are spring-loaded with this little thing that interacts with the uh, locking mechanism down here. Both splay open so you can sharpen either scissor. Um, functionality definitely goes to the Wave, but, you know, they're about as functional as a pair of scissors <laughs> can be when they're only the length of, like, the tip of a finger. So yeah, cutting little hairs, uh, cutting threads off your clothes, cutting your nails, that works. It works with both of these, actually, um, but the cleaner cut definitely happens with the Leatherman scissors. They do need to, both designs need to be, um, you know, straightened out this way. You take the top handle and make it all in line, and then you can fold it away. On to the next tool. You can see these are very, like, nail-dependent tool sets here. Ah, micro driver. I don't currently have it in here. Let me check the other wave. Yep, okay. So, this will be our visual representation of, of what would be in this slot. I don't have enough uh, small bit drivers, but there's essentially a small flat head on the left side here and a small Phillips head on the right side. This one's kind of beat up. I think it was rusty and I de-rusted it at one point. Now it just kind of looks like it's charred or something. But if you have eyewear um, adjustment needs, this is something you're not going to get on the Multiforce. The Multiforce in this tool spot has a little flathead driver. It's maybe mm, five millimeters, something like that. So let's move on to the next tool. On the Leatherman, it's going to be a longer flathead driver, approximately the same width, uh, maybe another millimeter or so, extra width on the Leatherman version. And what does the Multiforce have on the last tool slot here? It has the can opener. I have not personally used the Multiforce can opener, although it shares the design with the Leatherman, I'll show you in just a second. Also has a wire stripping notch right here. Okay, can opener on the Wave is over next to the flat driver over here. So, can opener designs. Very, very similar. This is the Leatherman on the bottom. It has a V-shaped wire stripping notch. The Multiforce just has sort of a rounded cutout there, a little bit smaller. So probably you can get a little bit thicker gauge wire in your Leatherman. Um, the Leatherman can opener works surprisingly well. I have not personally used the Multiforce, but I imagine it would operate pretty similarly to the Leatherman in terms of the edge. Mm, Leatherman's got a sharper edge on their can opener, so it would probably work a little bit easier in my experience. If you have need of a can opener, of course, you could always just, you know, sharpen up this little bevel right here and you'd be good to go. And the last tool the Leatherman is offering is the flat exchangeable driver. So they make these proprietary flat bits. One is a Phillips number two and then a uh, flat head on the other side. And they are reversible. There's like a tiny spring in here that keeps it retained, which is what you're hearing when it kind of clicks into place. And it's very secure. You can't really knock it out. Whereas on the Multiforce, you have, and this is interesting and exclusive to the Multiforce, a double-ended driver, which is a uh, standard size. Now, you do need a bit that looks like this with the retention ball in the middle. And it has to be like this length exactly because when it folds up, it has to clear that little tab right there that keeps it, the plier heads from binding up in the handles. So you do need a 
specialty kind of bit to fit in there. Of course it comes with this one, but if you put just a regular bit in there, you can see it gets really deep. There's no magnetic retention. The retention happens because of this little ball right here. When you put a normal bit in there, it just kind of falls out. And you can get bits like this, but uh, they're a little bit harder to come by than, you know, say these where you can get them at Harbor Freight or whatever. Um, they kind of get around this a little bit by offering you a bit extender, right? And this comes standard with the tool. You can see it has a little retaining ball, fits right in there. To get a bit extender for the Leatherman costs extra, but this comes with the multi-force. And then, where'd my little bit go? You can use a regular bit and it does hold in there, retains pretty well. And you can see quite a bit of length. That's, uh, you know, probably a good four inch reach or so. And that's not too bad. Does it work with this? Yes, it does. Works best with this same um, interesting ball retention style bit, but it is usable for a normal quarter inch bit. So there you have it. Differences in driver function. I do like a fully dimensioned Phillips head, by the way. <clears throat> Having the full dimension on the Phillips when you're bearing down on something really uh, chews up the hardware a lot less than the uh, Leatherman style. In terms of carrying, both of these will come with a sheath at purchase. Here's the Ozark Trail sheath. Has a spot for your bit extender. It's, you know, pretty basic sheath. You've got a, got a clip here and you could fish it through sideways, I guess, if your belt's skinny enough. I don't really use a sheath. It just kind of holds my bit extender. I like the pocket clip. It comes on the multi-force and I find it works well. You will have the tool sticking up a little bit out of your pocket, but you will also have the tool sticking up out of your pocket with the Leatherman, um, depending on the thickness of your pants. You got really thick pants, they're gonna stop here. If you got you know normal thickness pants, it will go uh, to deep carry. The pocket clips are on differing sides of the tools, but I don't find that they perform much differently. They both ride in my pocket pretty reliably without canting too much in or you know out so to speak we're going to do a weight comparison the leatherman wave weight in grams without the pocket clip 243.34 grams the weight of the multi-force in grams 280.46 grams the weight of the leatherman wave plus in ounces is 8.583 ounces. The weight of the Ozark Trail Multiforce in ounces is 9.892 ounces. So we can see the Ozark Trail Multiforce is just a little bit heavier, you know, maybe 35 grams or so. It's not very noticeable in terms of carrying these every day. I would call them pretty comparable in size, especially compared to something really heavy hitting like the Surge, which is uh, about 12 ounces. It's absolutely gigantic. So these are pretty comparable in terms of weight and the way that they carry. So the real big difference is going to be the price point. Uh, I hope I mentioned that the Leatherman Wave comes with a sheath, although... So the pocket clip is an additional $9 on top of what is $110 US here in November of 2022. The Ozark Trail, available at Walmart, is I paid 42 US dollars. And uh, that was it. Came with a sheath, came with the bit extender, came with the double-ended bit for at 42 bucks. Um, pretty incredible. Now you could argue that at that price point, what you're paying for is Leatherman's 25-year warranty. And I can't argue that. The 25-year warranty is really awesome. However, I've heard great things about Walmart's return policy for these, this, this multi-tool over here. So it's hard to say what's gonna work better for you in terms of a tool, considering how drastically similarly they function. However, if you're really on a budget, this is kind of the way to go. Um, if you're not shy about not having that 25 year warranty, Ozark, multi-force all the way. <laughs> I have talked about this tool extensively on Reddit. As people are like, I want to get 
somebody that I kind of know, a multi-tool, and they are really hard on their tools, what should I get them? I usually say the multi-force because it's going to cost you less. If you lose it, you can buy another one and still have spent less than just buying one Leatherman Wave Plus. Now, I'm not saying Leatherman is overpriced by any means. This is a made in the USA multi-tool, okay? So that costs more. It just does. This is made overseas in China, I believe. So, you know, uh, if your politics factor in, you've been duly warned. Okay, I think that pretty much wraps it up. I hope this helped you compare the Ozark Trail Multiforce and the Leatherman Wave Plus. Both excellent tools, even at differing price points. Um, I honestly carry them interchangeably, so I, I hope this helped you because I, I still have to decide every day which one of these I'm taking out or if I'm taking the Surge or, you know, any of the others in my collection. All right, I've been Joe. You've been watching Ink Iron. Thanks for joining me. Like, sub, do the things. Also do fountain pens and knives and typewriters and other stuff on the channel. So if you like that, come back for more. All right, catch you next time. Bye.